Hey guys, this is Bill Allen with Evolve Lab. Have you ever wanted to animate your AI image like this? Well, that's what we're gonna do today. I'm gonna show you three easy steps to animate your AI image. Let's jump into it. All right, so here we are in the tutorial on how to animate your AI image. And basically what I have here is a Rhino model uh, powered with Grasshopper. So I have kind of this parametric uh, tower over here in the Rhino environment. And uh, I have Varus over here in this window. Now to launch Varus, you just simply, simply go to Rhino and type in the command prompt Varus. That should launch it for you. And then you'll be able to have access to an AI image generator. So the unique thing about Varus is it actually uses your model as a substrate. So whether you're using Rhino, Revit, SketchUp, Vectorworks, uh, Autodesk Forma, et cetera, it doesn't matter. It's gonna use your model as that substrate to create your AI image from. Um, I've been really kind of uh, digging the kind of cyberpunk uh, kind of style. It's like really futuristic and it has the neon lights. And so I grabbed this um, prompt here, which I'll throw in the description there. So if you also want to try to use this prompt, you can do that as well. But the first step to basically starting to animate our image, and you can do this a lot of different ways. You can actually just take a static image and upload it to tools like Runway and others. Um, but what I want to do is kind of show you this added extra step that I think really adds a really cool dynamic to the process. And so whether you're using a Revit model, you're just kind of rotating around your building, or if you're going to use a Rhino model, one of the cool things is you can actually build your model parametrically, which I've done here. And what you can do is you can step the different parameters in your project. And so just a very, very simple example of this, let's say like I want to change, you know, the number of floors from 25 to say 24. And if I do this, um, that parameter is going to go ahead and update and it's going to update my Rhino model from 25 floors to 24 floors. Now, one of the things that you'll have to do with every one of these steps is you actually have to um, refresh your Varus window. So here I just uh, went from 25 floors to 24 floors. And if I kind of go to my preview here for the Rhino model, and I hit the little refresh button right here, you'll see my Varus window updates. And then I can go ahead and kick off another rendering. And so basically the process is just rinse, recycle, repeat over and over again. And you'll just go ahead and step it again. Or you can also um, use your graph mapper and just change this slightly. Now, um, another piece of advice uh, that's kind of helped me with this process is I would actually um, double click in the graph mapper and I would just move it slightly, and that way you're not waiting on uh, the preview on every one of those. There can be a little bit of a lag, and there may be some more efficiencies you can gain by building your Grasshopper script a little better. But uh, anyways, that was kind of my process, and you'll see that my, my Rhino model would update, and then what I would do then, again, is in the Varus environment, just hit that refresh window and re-render again. And so then I got all of these uh, images down here. That's, that's step one, is to kind of step your model using Grasshopper or rotating around in a 3D view. Um, the second step is to make sure that when you're rendering, that you're locking the seed. Okay, so now the seed, what this does, if the, if the seed is not locked, it creates randomness. So every single image will be drastically different uh, from one to the next. We don't want that. What we want to do is try to create that consistency. So that way, every time we create a new image, that it's consistent from one to the next. And that's what that render from sa same seed does. I rendered a bunch of these at the beginning to kind of get a seed that I liked. And then I picked one and I liked this kind of uh, style. So I went ahead and rolled with that. There's the render from same seed, checkbox it. So that's step two in rendering an AI image and getting it to a video. All right, the third step now is to go to Runway. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up Runway now. All right, so now we're inside of Runway. This is a really cool application. It convert, does a lot of different things actually, but one of the use cases we're gonna be using is converting that image to video. And so, as mentioned, there's basically two options I want to show you. The first is just simple image to video, all right? So we're going to use text image to video, and you can go ahead and grab one of your files. Um, if you don't already have an asset in here, you can go grab one. Let's go ahead and go to our renderings, 
and I'm gonna use, um, let's say this one here. Go ahead and upload it. And then what you'll do is you'll prompt. So you'll say, um, you know, pan to the right, something like that. And go ahead and hit, go ahead and hit generate. All right, so we just got our rendering back and you can see it did a pretty decent job actually. It took the image and I put uh, pan and zoom to the right and you can see it's doing just that. I did get a couple other ones that were not so great just to kind of show you. Uh, the software's not perfect. So this one, you know, it added some cars that were kind of looking like they were colliding. Didn't actually really make a lot of sense. Before that, it had some random text at the bottom. So you might have to give it a few tries before you get one you like. This third one, you know, third time's a charm. I was able to actually get that third option and it did work. And it's a good, you know, workflow. It, it works. It, if it converts just one static image and you're just looking to pan it or zoom it, this workflow works. The other option that I want to show you is how you can take multiple images and interpolate them together, blending them. And I actually really like this workflow. Let's, so let's look at that other option. All right, so if we go back out to Runway and in the search here, if we just type in interpolation, you'll see it right here, frame interpolation. We're going to go ahead and launch that. And what you'll do is you'll go ahead and upload the images that we stepped using Rhino and Grasshopper, and we'll bring those into Runway. So I'm going to grab these images here. All right, there they are. They're all loaded. And I'm going to go ahead and hit the Generate button. And it came back pretty quick, so let's go ahead and see what we got. All right, there you go. So kind of the key here is to grab images, step them in Rhino slash Grasshopper or in Revit. And then what you wanna do is pick an adjacent image to that one that's very similar and the tool will basically blend those two images together. So that's the other option to animate your images. All right, there you have it. That is how you convert an AI generated image to a video. Again, we looked at two different options. One simply just using that AI generated image from Veris, uploading it to Runway, converting it to a video. The other option was to interpolate multiple images produced from Veris using the Runway tool. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please hit that like and subscribe button and we'll catch you on the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.